Where should I dig a dugout? Where should you dig a dugout? Today I'm going to show you five spots on my farm where I think they'd be a good spot to dig a dugout. I'm going to show you a combination of out in the field as well as right here on the whiteboard. For those of you who don't know, my name is Brock, my channel is Brick Deerskin, and I make videos about my farm, my farm journey, cattle, rotational grazing, and starting our new farm, which started this year. So stay tuned for this if you like it, hit the subscribe button, watch other ones, let's get into the video. So first, I'm going to draw my farm out really quickly. North is this way. So we have two quarters. And currently, one quarter has a stream flowing through it. Right all the way along here. So the number one question is, why do you want a dugout? For me, I want a dugout to water cattle. That's the purpose. So if that's my purpose, I don't need a dugout here where I already have water. I want to put it somewhere further on the back quarter where I need water, where I want to be able to rotate the cattle and bring the cattle closer to the water. So here I'm going to show you spots one, two, three, four, and five. We have a few trees in around here and a few trees down back in there. So let's go and get at it. Okay, so here we are in the field. Wanted to just give you a good idea of the lay of the land, kind of where we are so you have an idea. We're in the very, we're in the northwest corner of the property, beside, between spots one, spots two, location number three, for a dugout potentially down there, location number four is in behind those trees. So here's where we're starting. You can see a lot of this is cleared. It's rolling ground but still somewhat flat there's no huge hills huge ravines so here we go into spot one this is a little bit of like a slough a low spot and when we walked this land last summer before buying it we noticed this was even still wet in the drought year obviously this little area is good at holding water it's sitting here and i'm curious to see how long it'll sit here as for how much water will shed well if you look around I was standing on a bit of a ridge there. It's hard to see, but that's about 50 yards behind me there. A little bit of higher ground here, and then another ridge point back in there. So I think this would make a very prime spot. Some of the reasons I don't like it is it doesn't really have a very big watershed. I think it's, it's somewhat limited, so that might not refill so quickly on a rain. As well, it's kind of further out in the open, and potentially on drier years, this is good hayable land. So let's move on to spot number two, and I'll show you where that is right away here. Here we are on location number two. Now I'm gonna show you a few reasons why I think this location might be better for holding water and building a dugout than location number one, and some reasons why it might not be. We're on a ridge once again. This is a higher ridge, and it's right in the middle of that ridge. We're in the middle of the property. So, so, Right away you can see some more snow catch will be here. Um, a lot of this watershed from the top of the ridge, that's, what I'm, that's why ridges are significant to me, is it shows you where the water is going to shed. On one half of this ridge, the water is gonna shed down this hill and run off into the trees. But on this half of the ridge, the, that's where the, the water divide line is, it's going to shed down towards this dugout. So an advantage of this, I see possibly a little less dirt to move than the first one. The first one, you're in the middle of almost a flat spot. If you want a big dugout for a lot of water, you got to move almost, you know, one to one. Every bucket of dirt, that's how much volume of water you're going to get. It already looks quite a bit deeper. It seems there's a, a lot more water being held here. Um, when I walk through it, there's a few spots I wouldn't dare walk through, whereas location number one, it definitely had some spots I could probably walk through all of it. And here you can also tell just by the trees. There's no big tall trees right in here. There's a few little bushes, and then up a little higher is the taller trees. So that tells me 
it's a little bit swampy, it's a little bit wet. So another advantage of this location might be that I'm not using up that nice flat land in the middle of the field. I might be able to situate it, kind of tuck back into the trees. Another really key spot or point to this spot that location number one doesn't have is its proximity to trees and shade relative to the sun. So this direction is south. That's where the sun will be the hottest. That's where most of the evaporation will be will lose water from. So here, especially if I can tuck this dugout a little further back into the trees, I think we'll have a little bit of shade, a little bit of a buffer from that evaporation. So there's a few reasons why I like number two. I'll show you the area that I'm going to now for location number three. I found some flowing water just on the other side, just to the south of location number two. Here we've got some running water into a channel of trees. Can you see this down here? Here we have a little stream. It looks like a runoff stream just from the melting water. A little, it's wore down the dirt. It's a bit of a low spot. Can you see that? Can you see it build up right in there? Can you see it back there? What you see right behind these bushes where the snow is cleared, that is where I showed you location number two. And just into the left there is the water. Now I see here there's a little water beside this tree. There's some water melting and running down here. And then, back up to the left there, there's location number two, out in the field. So here, this proves I can actually put the dugout potentially even closer into these trees. And once the snow melts, I'll have a better idea if this land is just a little lower. This really looks like an interesting spot. And also, because of this little stream, I think it might make it even more efficient to, per, for my equipment. Every bucket load of dirt could yield a couple buckets full of water, especially if I can just move some dirt in here, block this off, and dig out a little bit. We'll make a little bit of almost like a dam slash a dugout. Show you where location four now is. Boom, back in the field. Okay, so now you know where we're at. We're in the horseshoe, almost in the center of the property, the highest point, the driest point. Like I said, it's not a very conventional spot to put a dugout. Normally the first, thought you, first spot you think of is low ground, low spot, where all the water runs through, where it's just gonna get full every time. Obviously here, a lot of water is beginning to settle. A lot of ice here, it's a low spot. Everything on the side of the ridge will roll into it. Everything on the side of the ridge back here rolls down and quite a ways up into these trees can roll back here. So it looks like it really does have a fairly large watershed. In the middle here, some starts to go back away the other way. Some of the best benefits to me is having a water source up high on this high dry land. This will start letting me bring the cattle here. If the cattle come here, they'll recycle the nutrients. They'll come and eat the grass on the top of the hill. Whereas if there was no water here, you know how cattle are, they always graze the hardest right next to the water. So although I'm going to have in a lot of electric fencing designating only where they can graze to make sure everything gets grazed, it'll make it a lot harder if I don't have water nearby. So I think here's one very prime spot. I also think on the other side here, right in here is a little ravine, a little bit of a valley. And it filled up really quick in the summer or in the spring here. And that's where I think I need to monitor and take time. This spot might not really hold water for long. I think maybe it's dangerous, maybe, maybe it's a little sandier up here. When thinking about a dugout, Greg Judy talks about make it deep instead of wide because if it's wide, you're gonna have a lot more evaporation. But if it's deep, you can hold the same amount of water, but there's less surface area exposed to the sun to evaporate. So there's a few reasons where really this looks like a good spot initially, and it gets the water nice and high on the ground. Maybe I can find another spot where it would trickle over, and trickle over and fill a few ponds. That I could see as being very advantageous. But I think there's still one more place, one of my favorite picks, which I happen to leave till the end, that we can go show you now. So here, let's go on to location number five. This isn't location number five yet, but I wanted to show you from the high spot 
square location number five is. Right back there. I think the watershed for this would actually be one of the biggest for a field. I see the water roll down here to a little wet spot here. And then I see it go down to the middle of those trees. Right smack dab in the middle of these trees. There's a little higher ridge here where some of the water will shed this way. But I can see all the way along here, all the way in the middle, and to the inside of those, that tree line as well. I can see a solid 10, maybe even 20 acres of very light rainfall that would eventually trickle towards this dugout. I think it'll refill the dugout, but I think it won't. It might help the dugout last a little longer. When you put a dam in the bottom of a valley or a dugout, right where, at the end, where all the water's gonna come, Water is also going to attack it with its most force. The most powerful force is volume and velocity. And when you're at the bottom, you have all the water uphill. Whereas here, it'll be a little slower. It won't be able to wash it all out probably in one shot. So let's head over there and show you exactly where I'm thinking. Okay, now you can see the trees a lot closer. Here we are right near the spot. This goes back to my point earlier about having the trees sheltering the water. You can see the sun right now is in its high spot. The water's here. Why is all this snow here? Well, the snow hasn't melted because this, the trees have blocked a lot of that sunlight from hitting the snow. And I believe it will work the exact same way in the summer when the water's here. Now, I think I can get the dugout really close here, but you can see, here it is. Here is a lot of sitting water once again. All rolling down from the peak we were standing on way up there. Now just because I see the water sitting here doesn't mean that's where I have to dig the dugout. It still looks like it rolls and runs down into these trees. So there might make a really prime opportunity for me to kind of make all my main points hit at once. It's really far away from the prime water source of the spring. It's on the furthest part of the property. Number two, it has a good supply of water shedding into it. Number three, it has not only uh, trees shading it to the south, I could very likely go and build the dugout right in the trees, back in there, so that it's completely surrounded by trees to catch that fog, to catch that vapor, to shelter it, shelter it from the wind. So here's my final location. And here's one of the prime, I think, one of the best spots to dig. I'm going to take the time to watch the land, see what it does, and see what spots dry up faster, which spots melt faster. Back to you, Brock. So there you have it. Location number five would be my top pick, with number four being a close second. I chose number five because it's far away from the normal water source, it's sheltered by the trees. It has a good sized watershed, but not so big that it just gets washed out with water. But I also really like number four, even though it's not sheltered by the trees, I do have the potential to put a pipe in somewhere because it's higher up on a hill and maybe run the water out lower. So that would be another option for me to look at that I might even look further into in other videos. But other than that, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and check out my other videos. Thank you.